Greetings and welcome to Global Harvest Prayer Network. We begin with worship at 6 a.m. South African time, but we encourage you to log on at 5.30 a.m. for intercession. Please mute your mics and switch off your videos unless prompted to do so. Please do not have two or more multiple gadgets unmuted at the same time to avoid an echo. Are you new to Global Harvest Prayer Network? We send you a very warm welcome. Please leave your contact information in the chat box and someone will be happy to follow up with you. Our daily ministrations are recorded on YouTube. We encourage you to subscribe to Global Harvest Prayer Network. Thank you and God bless. Now over to the media. Glory to Jesus. Good morning, family. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. This Good morning, Pastor Light. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, sorry, I didn't know I was muted again. Thank you so much for this morning. It's been amazing. I thank God for the entry prayer. Thank you, Mama Babsi. Thank you so much, Sister Mary, for leading us in that Bible review. And thank you, the media. Um, by the mercies of God, we are continuing in our focus this week, which is holding on to God for his grace to move us from a season of wilderness to a season of blossoming gracious goodness of God that will cause impossibilities to break out of, you know, possibilities of God to break out of you know, circumstances that look impossible. Trusting God that both in our lives and in our families, in our communities and ministries and businesses and nations, that God will cause great things to begin to happen, which every law of nature prohibits. Because of his grace, because of his mercy, and because of the appointed time of his visitation, appointed time of his visitation, because when God said time comes on any issue with any individual, strange things begin to happen. Now, this morning, the Lord called my attention. He said, I should not forget the things that led to dryness. Every season of dryness, every season of wilderness experience, has a reason, has a reason, has a root cause of it. Be it in the days of Elijah when he showed the heaven that there was no rain. You remember, it was not because he wanted to display power. No, it wasn't because he wanted to punish the people. The people of Israel departed from the ways of God. The people of Israel began to dance between two opinions. Some feel God should be worshipped. Some felt that Baal sh should be their new Lord and God to be worshipped. And that offended the heart of God. And in order to prove his love, because God is a loving father, in order to prove his love as to restore his people, as to bring his people back to order, back to order, he had to stay up Elijah to appear in the scene and brought the judgment of God that showed the heaven, there was no rain for three and a half years. There was no rain anywhere. All right. Why did God show the heaven? Because the people departed from his ways. Why did God show the heavens? Because the people are no longer walking in alignment with his plans and purpose, with his commands, with his instruction, and with the law he has given to the nation of Israel, which was aimed at making them the greatest nation in the land of the living. The law gave to is the laws God gave to Israel was not to punish them, was not to make life you know difficult for them, was not to make them not to enjoy their life, but to make them the greatest nation on earth, to make them the most outstanding nation, the pivot on which every activity of humanity revolves. So God gave them that law for their good. God gave them laws for their good. 
all right? And as long as Israel was walking in God's instructions and guidelines, they were a mystery. They were a mystery in the land of the living. But whenever Israel shifted, you know, significantly shifted away from the standards of God, they, 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 they saw affliction, they saw wilderness, they saw, you know, you know, suspension of rain and everything that is good began to happen to them. Let me call, remind you again, according to what we've said so far, that time of and a wilderness experience, time of, you know, desert experience, you know, which is as a result of suspension of rain comes, you know, to prove that God is not pleased. Whenever God is not pleased in his love to draw the attention of his people, be it at the national level or at the city level or at the business level or institutional level or family level on the level of individuals. When God wants to draw his people's attention to repentance, one of the things he does is to suspend rain. So when rain is suspended, everything goes bad. Everything goes bad is one of the ways God regained his people. He restores his people to allow rain to be suspended so that they will begin to seek him in repentance in order to return and the rain will fall again. So today we are going to be looking at the issue of repentance. I'm sure as an intercessor and a minister of the, in the kingdom, you can teach eloquently on the subject of repentance. I'm not intending to do that teaching, but to bring God to a place of bringing repentance before the Lord to deal with what brought that dryness, what brought that wilderness you know, experience that God had to defy the laws of it to cause trees to shoot out of it. So what it tells me is that one of the ways that oaks of righteousness one of the ways that oaks of righteousness, something good, something unusual, something beyond any earthly and human rational reasoning can break forth is when we bring repentance. When we bring repentance, we turn you know, our wilderness into a blossoming garden. Repentance shifts the tide. Repentance brings major shift, major shift. Repentance ends a season of desert experience, a season of wilderness experience, a season of dryness, of pain, of sorrow, of unproductivity, a season of fruitless living, a season of hardness and hardship, a season when everything good, everything good is suspended or withheld or withdrawn. Repentance brings it to an end. Remember, it is about you, it is about your family, it's about your industry, it's about your business, it's about your ministry, it's about your city, it's about the nation, it's about the nations of the earth. We are standing here to represent them, pleading with God that he will show mercy to end any form of desert or wilderness experience our nation is going through in one sector or the other, our family or ministry is going through our individual lives, our children our spouse, our parents are going through that we stand in proxy to stand on their behalf to bring repentance. Per adventure, it will please God to turn away his anger and cause something good to break out of a seemingly tough, rough, difficult ground so that the, the goodness of God will be made manifest. Now, I want to begin from the book of uh, Amos chapter 4 from verse 6. Amos chapter 4 from verse 6. Let's take it from verse 6 to verse 8. Amos chapter 4. Now he says, thank you, Lord Jesus. And I also give, he says, and I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and want, and want of bread in all, your, in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. 
And also, I have withholding the rain from you. I'm withholding the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon and the piece where wrong, it rained not with that. With that. So two or three cities wandered onto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied, but they were not satisfied yet. Have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Now you notice here that the focus, the, okay, God had to shut the heaven, verse, verse number seven. God had to shut the heaven. He said, I have withheld the rain from you. I have withheld the rain from you. And whenever God withholds the rain, whenever God withholds the rain, what happens? Everywhere, there is dryness everywhere. As a result of the dry ground, everything suffers. The animal kingdom suffers. The birds of the earth suffer. The vegetation, you know, the the the. The, the vegetation suffers, trees, grasses dries up, all right? You plant things, it doesn't produce. Human being suffers, everything suffers. Productivity is suspended, destinies are suspended. Progress is retarded, nothing works. It is sickness, of course, during famine, when there is no rain, when there is drought, there is no rain, everywhere is dry, dust is everywhere. As a result of it, sickness multiplies. Pandemic multiplies, diseases multiplies, affliction multiplies, suffering multiplies, murmuring, weeping, mourning, you know, complaints is everywhere because rain is suspended. He says, and also I have withheld, withholding the rain from you when there was yet three months to the harvest. Take note of that. You were just close to the harvest period. You were just close to the harvest period when the rain was needed the most. When you needed the rain, you needed the rain. When you needed that rain because you are heading into the harvest period, the harvest period, which was the desire, the expectation, the longing of every farmer. All right? When you needed rain the most, I withheld it from you. Why? Because the target was not to torture the people, but for them to return back to him. He says, because of the withholding of the rain, he said he caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. You know, and the city on which it has rained became like the gathering place. People were traveling from one community, from one city, from one nation to the particular city, the particular nation or community where the rain was falling. And they were fetching water but they were not satisfied. They were not satisfied. There is discontentment. There is dissatisfaction in many places around the world. People run from, I remember somebody met me in Johannesburg years ago, a, a, an engineer, a young man that had masters. You know, he said he wanted to sell some of his things. I said, why? He says he's running back to Nigeria. He wants to retire back to Nigeria. Why? He said things are so difficult in South Africa. I can't take it anymore. So he sold his things and went back to Nigeria. And I think some months afterwards, I saw him again. I said, my friend, you told me you are going back to Nigeria. He said, yes, I went to Nigeria. And so why are you here? He said, wow, when I got to Nigeria, I saw that things are more difficult there. So I had to run back. Okay, now people run from nation to nation, from city to city, seeking greener pasture, thinking things will be easier there. But the people where, some people where in South Africa want to run to, to America, some want to run to, to, to Europe, and some people in Europe want to run to Cape Town, want to run to America, and all of that, vice versa. The reality is that it's not where you are that matters, it is where the rain is falling for you. Is where the rain is falling for you. Somebody can be in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the rural place and the rain of God is falling for that person there, all right? And the person is blossoming and people who are in the mega cities are suffering drought, no rain. The rain is withheld. 
They are living amidst opportunities and privileges, but they can't access it because the heaven is shut. Is heaven is short. So it's not your geographical location that matter, but where God has positioned you, where God has positioned you, or the heaven that is over your head. Some people, the heaven over their head is short. Some cities, the heaven over their head is short. So in this case, God opened the heaven over a particular nation or a particular community or particular city or family, and others were gravitating or running toward that place to find help, but they were not satisfied, they were not contented, they were murmuring, they were still in lack, and the whole essence is to compel the people to ask questions, Lord, what do we do? What do we do for a major shift, a major shift from wilderness experience to a blossoming open heaven garden experience? What do we do? So now he says, in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter seven, which we all know, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, from verse seventeen, from verse thirteen, rather. Now, God, in His mercy and in His love, like I said, can shut down heaven so that His people will return back to Him. What did He say there? He said, "If I shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land." And, or if I send pestilence among my people, he acknowledges that these are his people, his people. He loves them, all right? But because of their wrongdoing, their rebellion, because of their rebellion, their departure from his ways, his standard, which is set for their own good. If they depart from it, he can show the heaven to suspend rain. He can command locusts to come and eat up their labors. He can send pestilence. And if I do so, what did he say in verse 14? If these my people, verse 14, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, humble themselves, humble themselves. If my people, if my people, my own people, if they will humble themselves, all right, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will I hear from heaven and forgive their land and I will heal their land and I will heal their land. I will hear their land. Look at the next verse. It said, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend to unto the prayer that is made in this place. As I was reflecting on this scripture this morning, the Lord caught my attention. Remember, this altar is raised for the healing of nations. This altar is raised for the healing of nations, for the healing of nations, to water the nations, to water communities, to water cities, so that the nations will blossom, the cities will blossom, the communities will blossom, individuals will blossom, ministries will blossom, businesses will blossom. And in blossoming here, we are talking about walking into God's plans and purposes and flourishing according to the heartbeat of God, according to the plans of God, according to the purposes of God. Look at verse 16. He says, for now have I chosen to and sanctify this house that my name may be there forever. My name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually, perpetually. Servants of God, I want to say to you, Global Harvest Prayer Network is beyond each one of us, is beyond pastor light, all right? It is here to live. It has come to live. It will outlive us. It will outlive us. Have you read about the Moravian revival? It began through prayer that was that went on, went on for a hundred years. People were gathering to pray. Year after year, decade after decade, people were praying and praying and praying and praying. It was like nothing was happening, but they kept on and kept on, that held on and kept praying, kept praying tirelessly, persistently, persistently, patiently, patiently. They were not just praying for bread and for meat and for food. They were praying for the move of the Spirit of God over the nations, for the move of God, for the 
outpouring of the grace of God that bringeth salvation, that turn nations back to God, that turn families back to God, that turn generations back to God. And they kept on on this until God arose and things happened. This is our own time. He says he has chosen and sanctified this house. He has chosen and sanctified this house that his name should be here forever and his eyes and his heartbeat will be focused on this house perpetually. So whenever we are coming to this place to pray, please understand this altar is sanctified and the name of God is placed on it. The eyes of God is here. The ears of God are here. And God is taking note of your travel. God is taking note of your intercession. God is taking note of your petition that is poured out on this platform towards heaven for the healing of the nations, for the healing and liberation of the nations, for the restoration and realignment of the nations to the plans and purposes of God to his own glory and to his own praise. Now you notice, as I said earlier, whenever God shot heaven, whenever God allows pestilence or allows war or anything to happen, the target is that the people of God might come back to him humbled, repentant, and with a contrite heart, with a broken heart, to plead for mercy, for mercy, for mercy. And when that mercy is secured, things change. Healing of the land becomes a reality. When the land is healed, the economy will be healed. When the land is healed, the people will be healed. When the land is healed, the activities will be healed. God loved the healing of the nations and the healing of the people. God loved the restoration of his people. It is his heartbeat. God is a father. No father will, want, will delight in the suffering of his children. I can't imagine myself rejoicing over the pain of my own child. No, no father does it. Even if the child is rebellious. I remember listening to one great father of the body of Christ in Nigeria, you know, who her son went into all kinds of evil, all kinds of evil from drug addiction to uh, robbery, to, you know, uh, assassinating people, killing people, all manner of things. Eventually this boy was caught in by the police and was in jail. And they, he was a very notorious boy. And when the father heard about it, he went to the prison. And they, everybody knew him. Reverend, what are you doing here? My son is here. What? Your son? You? Your son is here. Doing what? That boy is my son. And this man said, that when they heard him, they called him. Is this your father? They say, this is your father. Yes. What happened? The boys broke down. For 25 years, the man said it, people broke down in tears. This man of God said, when he preached all he could, did all he could, and the son chose to be rebellious, he resorted to prayer and fasting. According to him, he said he fasted for 25 years. I'm like, how come? He fasted for 25 years for one child. I don't know if he was doing it maybe he was fasting from 6 to 12 or 6 to 3. I can't explain that. But that was what the man said. So when this thing happened, on the 25 years of patient pleading with God, repenting and repenting and repenting on behalf of this boy, finally this boy broke down and wept and wept and wept and returned back to God. <laughs> I don't know the rest of the story, but it looks like that boy became a giant in the kingdom, a giant in the kingdom. It took long time of waiting and holding on the horn of the altar, pleading for God's mercy and God's intervention. Why am I saying this? Sometimes God wants us to be patient. God wants us to be patient. Bringing repentance in batches upon repentance, upon repentance, on behalf of your children, on behalf of the city, on behalf of the nation, on behalf of your tribe, on behalf of the people in your industry. Now, what we are doing is a priestly work. 
a priestly work. Priests are people that stand between God and humanity. They are people that appeal on behalf of the people, on behalf of the people before God. As you know, in the book of Ezekiel, the Bible said there was oppression, there was wickedness, there was, you know, a maltreatment of widows and strangers and the poor and all kinds of atrocities was going on. And God was grieved and began to look for a man who is standing the gap to appeal to his, for his mercy, to appeal, to appeal to heaven for mercy. And he couldn't find anyone against his wish, against his wish, which was to save the people. He had to destroy the people because nobody was there to stand in the gap and appeal for mercy over the land and over the people. So what have I just said? When God finds a people that are willing to pay the price, not because of the way they feel, all right, not because they were well treated, not because that things are going all well with them, but because they feel the pulse of God's heart. They feel the passion of God, and they know that God is not willing to see any nation or any tribe or any people perish. Therefore, they take responsibility to stand in the gap to say, God, I am here taking the place of my generation, my, the young men, the young women, the married, the single, the widowed, all right, the, the rich, the poor, all right, the leaders, I'm standing in the gap to plead for mercy and to bring repentance over their atrocities. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. These guys are robbing the industry, robbing nation robbing people and living flamboyantly and uh, you know even oppressing the righteous and you are still praying for God to have mercy and save them that is why it is not given to everybody the office of the priests all right is not for everybody some people are called into it to mediate between God and mankind and it is from the kingly priestly ministry that kings emerge. I repeat, it is from king, priestly ministry that God raised kings. He takes priests to officiate in the kingly office who will execute judgment. There are certain things you can speak over a nation. Heaven will take note of it. But there are certain things a priest will speak over a nation. It will be endorsed and enforced without delay because you took responsibility to plead with God to negotiate the destiny of those territory and those people. So when you speak, heaven hears you because you have a spiritual background, a spiritual, you know, um, qualification, spiritual, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, spiritual qualification to speak over those territory. Summarily, if you do not participate in negotiating or pleading for mercy over a nation, if you come to decree things, the nation will not hear you and heaven will not hear you. So why God is preparing us in this priestly assignment is because he wants to use us in the kingly realm so that we can begin to decree things and it will be established. There are people who, when they are speaking from the altar of heaven, the angels are watching, heaven is watching, who is speaking? Does he know the pain of the people? Does he know the pain of God, of God towards the people? If your record is zero in that regard, your decree will have no influence. But if God is going to use you to affect nations, affect cities, communities, people, groups, industries, all right, generations, families, then you have to be involved in pleading with God before you can decree justice and judgment and it will take place. Having said that, I'm going to pause here before we continue into the prayer. Okay, let's just read the book of uh, Proverbs chapter one. Please, can I ask you at your time, take time to read the book of Proverbs chapter one from verse 23, from verse 23 to 33. From, please just promise me you will do that. It will help you a lot with respect to this. Proverbs chapter one from verse 30, 23 rather, from verse 23 says, turn you to my reproof. Turn ye, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you and will make known my words unto you and will make known my words unto you. Now, I won't have time to read through it all, but the point is when you, when you hearken to the voice of the Lord, he said, I have called you, I've called you because I have called and you refused 
you refuse to have research because I have called and you refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. All right? No man regarded. He said, but you have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. He said, when your fear cometh at desolation and at your destruction cometh as a wild wind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall you call upon me, but I will not answer. Then you shall seek me early. Say they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof, they despise all my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But who so so hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So I want to say to us as we pray, the Lord delights in the peace and prosperity of his people. But for that to be activated, there has to be genuine return back to him. When Israel departed from the ways of God, they always found themselves in a wilderness situation. And when they returned, there is a blossoming open heaven over them. So let's take that prayer. Lord, is there any way I need to return back to you? Is there any aspect of my life I need to reconcile? I need to restore? I need to return back to your standard, to your will, to your purpose, to your to your to your requirements, to your requirements. We are in an unfortunate generation where people are not interested in what God is saying about their life. They are only interested in what they want, what they want in order to show up and make people know that they have arrived. But they are not interested in what does God want? What is God saying? Any rebuke, any instruction, any area I need to get my life in order. People are not interested any longer because it is the end time we have been reading about. So let it not be your portion. Don't allow your ear to be deaf to the instructions of God. It always leads people to a desert. It always leads people to the wilderness. And finally, remember the reason why God took Israel through that rigorous long journey. It was because of the obstinance of their heart. He wanted them to learn, to learn, to mature, all right, and to deal with their, their fear, to deal with the fear in them, the unbelief in them, all right, their, 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 their rebelliousness. He wanted to get it out of them, and he had to take them through all that rigorous journey. He said the essence is that they don't get in easily and find wars and their heart will faint. He passed them through experiences to mature them, to improve their focus on him so that when they enter into the land of promise, they will give the glory to him and to no one else. So what is going on in your life, sir? What is going on in your life, man? Is there an area God is calling your attention to refocus on him and to make him the center of everything, the center of your attention, the center of your interest, the center of your desire, your everything. Business is important. Ministry is important, all right? Position is important, all right? Success is important. Family is important. But you know the most important thing is your personal consecration and commitment and orderly work with God. That's the most important thing. When your life is in the right position, right state, every other thing will work in alignment to prove that God is a keeper of his promise. So shall we pray that prayer? Go ahead and talk to God. Lord, is there any area I need to realign with you? Is there any area I need to refocus my attention on you? Have I been distracted in any way on any issue? You know, ministry can take you away from God. Church can take you away from God. Business can take you away from God. Marriage can take you away from God. Children can take you away from God. But these are things that you prayed for and God gave them to you for your own good, for your own building, for you to serve God. But even serving God can make you 
to be working for God, but not working with God. Lord, I want to work for you and work with you. I want to do ministry and do it your own way, not the way of the world, not the way people want me to do it, not even the way I want to do it. I want to serve you the way you want me to serve you, so that when I finish the work, I will look back and say, yes, I have done what God wants me to do, not what circumstances want me to do. Shall we go ahead and pray? Lord, I am here to ask you, in any any way, search me, Lord. In any way, something. I come before your throne of grace, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, 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 L
around my business, even my workers. Some of you own businesses and you have people you have employed to work for you. Are there things happening there that have shot, that could shut the heaven, that brings wilderness experience? All right, Lord, I am asking you, standing in the gap as priest over that setup, to ask for mercy, for forgiveness, for cleansing. Said, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. All right. And turn away from their wicked ways. Turn away from the Lord. I'm here to turn away from everything that is not pleasing in your sight, that you might look down and heal my life. This is our last prayer before we begin to pray for the city and begin to pray for the nation for which we are gathered here. It begins with you. You need to be healed. Your own heaven needs to be opened. The rain has to fall for you in order to stand out, for you to stand out as a living proof of what it looks like when heaven is open upon somebody and the rain is falling. You have been going to fetch water from another place. God want the rain to fall for you so that others will come and fetch from you. Shall we begin to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, in the one to fall the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, as God, oh, Jesus, I want us to see ourselves standing before the nations and ask the Lord whatever brought dryness in Europe, in Africa, in North America, in South America, whatever is displeasing to you in Australia and in Asia, you will agree with me that there are a multitude of things, multitude of things. <clears throat> Can you see yourself as I'm holding this, you know, this phone, see yourself holding this, the globe and lifting it to the Lord and say, Lord, whatever is done over this nation, over this continent, I am standing, we are standing as priests, as advocates to ask for mercy, to ask for mercy for the sake of the remnant, for the sake of the remnant. You are not willing that any of the people in this nation should perish. The leaders of the nation do all manner of atrocities. The men, the women, okay? The rich, the poor, do all manner of things. Even the church people do all manner of things that are so offensive. Do you talk about the witchcraft that happened in the nations? Do you talk about sexual immorality of different kind and form and shape? Do you talk about robbery? Do you talk about shedding of blood? Do you talk about all kinds of 
consultation of demons and idols to have authority and power to rule God's people be it in the church, be it in government, in the marketplace, all kind of oppression, wickedness, lies, deception, manipulation of different kinds, wrong judgment. Some people are in prison today for what they did not do. The people that did the act are flourishing. The people, innocent people are in prison, in jail, 10 years, 15 years, life jail for what they did not do. How does God feel? I want us to talk about this before God today. There are wickedness, there are ungodliness that bring about wilderness over nation, over cities, over people groups, over industries, over businesses, over ministries. Lord, we are standing in the gap to say, Lord, we are sorry. In any way, we have offended you across the nations, beginning from your nation, beginning from your people group, beginning from your territory. Go ahead and plead with God. Shall we pray? Father, in the name that is above our names, I come Father, to you. in the name of Jesus Christ, 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 in we are asking you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are asking you, Lord, to send us a great way to the end of the world. We are asking you, Lord, to send us a great way to the end of the world. We are asking you, Lord, to send us a great way to the end of the world. We are asking you, Lord, to send us a great way to the end of the world. We are asking you, Lord, to send us a great way to the end of the world. We are asking you, Lord, to send us a great Take the communion. I want us to pray for the city of Cape Town. I don't know if you are aware of the history of Cape Town. I won't have time to go into that. But the summary is 
that Cape Town plays a significant role, has played a lot of significant role in be it in things that are good and things that are bad, all right? And we are seeing about their grace, grace abounds much more. It is not by accident that God sent me to Cape Town. It's not by accident that the Global Harvest Prayer Network began from Cape Town. It's not by accident that the Double Grace Summit is starting from Cape Town. We have 27 more days to go into that conference. I want us to pray that God, who in his wisdom gave us a venue that is unbelievable, that this movement, with this summit we hold, the very first of its kind we hold in the seat of government, in the seat of government. That is, it has a lot of implication. Because what we are doing here is to affect government, affect churches, affect cities, the economy, and every sector. God in his wisdom arranged it so. I want us to pray that this conference, the, the Double Grace Summit, Cape Town, all right, will take a dimension that everybody that will hear, that will be in that meeting and I will watch it, we know that this can only be God that there will be wisdom, there will be grace, there will be anointing, there will be God's presence, there will be the voice of God that will set people on fire, there will be double grace impartation, impartation that every participant and, and, and those who will connect to it will be literally set on fire that they will be shot out like arrows going into different parts of the sectors of the society to carry out the mandate of God for revival and for the restoration of the prodigal sons and prodigal communities and prodigal sectors of the society. Shall we pray? In the name of Jesus, Father, I'm calling upon you. In the name of Jesus, we bring them to we give you praise father we thank you yes lord all we have said here lord is that we are sorry and we bring repentance over our lives over our family over yes, our relations, those yes, who are connected to us, those who are associated with us, our colleagues, and the people we represent as church leaders, as business leaders, we stand on behalf of our people to say, Lord, we are sorry in any way we have offended you. We stand in the gap as Moses did for Israel. We stand in the gap as Ezekiel did for the people. We stand in the gap as the prophets did in their days. We stand in the gap, we stand in the gap to plead for your mercy and for the healing of our lands and our nations, our communities, our industries, our families, our own children, our own parents. We stand in the gap for the people we are leading in different fields of life to ask for mercy. And we ask that the rain will fall, the rain will fall, that we see 
cease to run from place to place fetching water. We have our own rain falling to the glory of your name and to the satisfaction of the longing of our soul and our spirit. Thank you, mighty God, for hearing us. There has to be the rising of the oaks of righteousness from the desert, from the wilderness, because the rain has fallen and God is shifting the tide and restructuring all things to bring forth the army from every nation that will move the kingdom agenda forward to establish the purpose of the cross in every nation, in every city, in every community, in every sector. Thank you, Father, for raising an army to yourself because the rain is falling. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Congratulations, servant of God. Let's call on the person to do the communion to please go ahead and bless the communion. Thank you so much. Good morning, saints. Good morning, Pastor Light and everyone, all the grace carriers on this platform. Um, this morning, we find our scripture in Isaiah 53 and verse 3, he says, <clears throat> verse 5, sorry, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. And we read also um, verse 8, sorry, verse 7. He was oppressed and afflicted. Verse 7, he was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. And this morning, when we think of the scripture, um, we realize that God is again telling us that he was wounded, he died. He was the lamb that was slain. He was the substitute for each and every one of us. And we can walk in this victory. We can walk in this healing. We can walk in, in the power of the resurrection power of Jesus. And so when we take the elements this morning, whatever it is that we are going through, whether there's an infirmity in the body, whether there is a situation that we're trusting the Lord for breakthrough, whether it is our community or even our own family, whether it's ourselves as we lay ourselves bare before God, let us take this communi uh, communion with that faith in our heart as we take it, Father, thank you for the healing properties of God. So we bless your name this morning, Father, as we raise these elements before you. We thank you that you are a God that hears us. We thank you that you, you are ever ready to come to our aid. We thank you that, Lord, when we are remembering you, Father, for what you have done for us, then it is a remembrance of faith, but it's a remembrance of gratitude. It's a remembrance in which we are seated this morning, saying, Father, for everything that we are busy enduring in our bodies, in our spirit, in our soul, thank you for the victory today in Jesus. So if, as we take this um, elements, Father, let it be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's Amen. take our elements and um, remember. Glory to Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor Peter, sir. The Lord bless you, ma'am. So, servants of God, I'll see you all tomorrow. I Pastor want Light, to... sorry yes. for interruption. We have a prayer request for Brother Z. He's struggling with pain, so if we could just please take this moment to pray for him. Okay, thank you. All right, so please, I want us to pray for Brother Z. Um, you all know him and the great, great role he plays on this platform. I want us to pray that the hand of God will touch his body from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. Let there be divine intervention, divine intervention. We've seen God do it again and again in his health. 
he will do it again even now as we are praying. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, the one that we bring our brother before you, oh my God, you are our healer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, Thanks, and we in one accord decree that your servant, Brother Z, receives divine touch at this very moment, at this same hour, divine touch from heaven, divine touch from heaven. Let the victory of the cross be enforced in that body. Let the health Christ paid for with his wounds be activated in that body right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. You said, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in our body, that same spirit will pick in our mortal body. I decree that body be made whole, be made whole. Let that pain be uprooted, disappear by the divine flow of the power of God in Jesus' name. I use him as a contact for anyone here is going through any pain, any affliction, I decree divine intervention, divine arrest of that pain, of that affliction, of that disease in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for healing and for perfecting that which concerns our body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, congratulations, brother. See, the Lord is your strength. Surely, goodness and mercy See you tomorrow. Amen. See you tomorrow, same time. Invite your Amen. friends. Amen. 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 Amen.